on you kids. Little f This is for you, armadillos. So this is my favorite shotgun. This is the Dilla Killer. I've had it a long time. Got it in New Orleans at a gun show. People love Annette. She's the center of attention. I'm six foot tall, woman tattooer with fangs and, you know, flaming hair. They're gonna remember me. Annette is a total street shop tattooer. People don't want art, and they especially don't want your art. They want tattoos. Really good businesswoman, but sort of mildly insane. <laughs> and that won't take no for an answer. She's just a force to be reckoned with. They walk in that door, they got money in their pocket. That money's mine. That's the boss lady. If you don't like it, then don't f with her. If you like it, jump on for the ride, and she'll take care of you and make sure everything's right. One of the most important things when you're doing tattoos is you gotta have your vape pipe. This is what makes a great tattooer. Pure marijuana oil. <laughs> oh shit, I'm inside. I shouldn't be smoking, should I? <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. I know the boss. <laughs> Okay, just basic colors there. Nothing special. No okra. <laughs> no 37 colors of green. I don't profess to be the most artistic person. I don't really do anything real flashy or special, but I do good solid tattoos for working class people. Just regular tattoos. She's classic American traditional with a little bit of what I would say is 90s New Orleans style. And they might not be like perfect if you want to dissect them, but they still have the flavor. All right, little line first, you ready? I'm gonna go kind of fast, okay? My first memories of tattoos were kind of, you know, of course, rebellious. When I was younger, I definitely didn't want to be considered normal or anything like that. What can you really do to be bad? Get a tattoo. So as soon as I found somebody to give me one, I got it. I only was aware of her story after we got together and hooked up, and that was a badass chick. I started hanging out with these bikers, and I got the biggest thrill and the biggest high off that. Knowing I could like repel the straights, you know? Because I really did not want to be one of those kind of people. I knew I would have a lot of tattoos at some point in the back of like some of the biker magazines, like Biker Lifestyle, they would have a little section for tattoos. And I always stared at every person and every picture and memorized all the artists and everything. Shotzi, Roy Boy, Carrie Barba, some of the New York people like Spiderweb, and then some of the Florida people were in there too, the Inksmiths, and I thought they were the shit. This is how you do a payday tattoo right here. I did this tattoo on him a long time ago. It's healed and hairy, as you can see. Yeah, little zombie Betty Page. Yeah. No, for me, the leg always, always hurts really bad. Back in the day, we used to go to bike week every year. That time in Florida, you could not tattoo in Daytona because they outlawed tattooing. They did have the Daytona Tattoo Underground there. I used to watch Gil Monty tattoo behind the Boot Hill Saloon in Daytona on a picnic table with no gloves outside in the courtyard. And uh, they would let me hang around as long as I kind of didn't get too in the way. And I was like, why can't I be a tattooer? And they're like, because your pussy will get in your way or whatever, you know. There weren't many women at the time tattooing. There were a few, but they were all kind of somebody's old lady back then. And in fact, the, the lady that taught me had learned from a biker guy, and he went to prison, so she really needed help. And she offered me an apprenticeship. 
I worked with her for about a year and a half, and then I went to Miami and worked at Tattoos by Lou. Tattoos by Lou is Lou Scabaris. He was the boss. When he walked in a room, all eyes were on him. He always said, you know, act like you're a freaking star. Always carry a wad of money and dress like a million bucks. Because if you dress like a million, they'll pay you a million. I thought, wow, that's pimping, you know? Like, you're something special because you're a tattooer. I was always kind of a character anyway. I was always kind of wild and loud. So, perfect job for me. And what kind of tattoos did you do? If you tattooed in that area, you did J.D. Crow, or you weren't a real tattooer. Every tattoo shop in the 90s had this stuff. They were great designs. The public loved them. It helped every tattooer in that era. I learned a tattoo on his stuff. I still think it's awesome. All right, Aaron. You made it through another one. There you go. Nice rose for you. More pretty, is yeah. You tell all the girls you got a flower for them. <laughs> Get one on your wiener. Be like, I got a flower for you, girl. <laughs> Oh, I miss New Orleans so bad. Isn't it neat? You can, you can paint your house any color here. They don't care. There's no rules. When you move to New Orleans, you can become anyone you want to be. It was kind of like a dream city for me to live in. 91, I got the job with Jackie. I haven't been here in a long time. How's it going? Pretty good, so how you been? I'm all right, doing all right. You look great. Thank the older you. you get, the better you look. How really? could you do that? Smoking mirrors. Oh, smoking something. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Gresham started one of the first modern tattoo shops in New Orleans, and she's been there over 40 years now. In 1976, when I started, women weren't really tattooing at all. And uh, I was not allowed to buy the building because I'm in the South. Remember the South in 76? That's a no-no. The shop looks great. Mm. I like your colors. They've always been bright colors, mm. you know that. Mm. Always bright. I need something oh. bright, a wake-up oh. color. I oh. know how many people you got working now. I think I got six, which is amazing. And if they don't straighten up, I'm gonna be back here working, I'm gonna have five <laughs> or less. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand, I can tattoo. This is not somebody who own, just owns a shop, you know what I'm saying? Jackie wasn't some woman who was somebody's old lady trying to tattoo. She really did it and did it on her own. There weren't that many women like that. When I think of Jackie's shop, I think of like names. Like that's a really big thing in New Orleans. You'll see like grandmas that have like their kids' names. And it's like this really specific style of script that you'll see, and you'll be like, that came from Jackie's shop. As long as our letters look like yours, you were fine. They better look like mine, because <laughs> I was on a rampage about that, and they got it, too. Everybody got it. My style is, if you made a mistake, I showed you where your mistake was. I think that's what made Annette grow much faster. Oh, here's the little paper you like so much. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do letters the right way. We'd get yelled at. You would say, you did a $100 tattoo, but you did nickel lettering. Right. So it, the tattoo sucks. It was a good, a good education. After much training and beatings, Jackie got me lettering good. Oh, well. You want to do a little one on me? Where, where you want it? I don't know. I don't have a lot of space, but I'll give you what I got. All right, and what would you like? A little flirtily. How did I know that? <laughs> I only have three on me. OK, we need to draw something on you, right? Yeah. Everybody uses them damn stencils for everything. And I hate that. Man, I remember when you came to me, you hadn't been tattooed in a year, I don't believe. About a year mm -hmm. at that. Oh, I was green. I tried to bluff like I knew what I was doing. You did. <laughs> no, you caught me doing some bullshit. I got yelled at. When she came to us, she was just basic. 
you pick the design off the wall and you stuck it on. Bam, that's it. Get them in, get them out. It was just such a challenge all the time for her. When I was here, we weren't allowed to use a copy machine no thermal or a thermal person. copier we didn't because have. that made us have to draw everything twice. Yeah. We were all kind of young tattooers, so mm -hmm. you know, at the time it was like, God damn it. Oh, we just prayed nobody wanted to change the size. But looking back, it's like that's the way to learn. Like Good just from training. repetition, I was learning every day. She was so ambitious and enthusiastic. I mean, that girl, I think she worked her ass off. She had the piercing end of the business, and I basically just let her have that. That was hers. And she drew flash, and she also tattooed. At Jackie's, she really concentrated on us being better artists as well as tattooers. She would make us go to conventions to meet new people. She always said, meet as many people as you can, get tattooed by them, pick their brains, watch what they're doing. You go and you ask them a bunch of questions and you give them money, bam, and you learn. The first convention she took us to was in Newark, New Jersey, and I got tattooed by Eddie Deutsch there. I wanted this uh, heart with tribal on my chest, very 90s tattoo, and he drew it and did it, and I thought, wow, there is a different world besides these biker tattoos. And that was kind of the first time I realized, wow, that's really good advice to get tattooed by these big shots and make friends with them and watch what they do. Don't hurt me, Jackie, don't hurt me. I, they tell me I'm pretty light-handed, and, and it has been in the past, so let's see. Now, when you tell the people I did this, you remember to tell them I was old when I did it. Oh, don't tell them I did it when I was young. Ain't nobody gonna even see it. Nobody looks at my legs. Perfect. The people who tattooed me were the best in the business at the time. My first tattoo was done by Ed Hardy. My second tattoo was Jack Rudy. I have a Greg Arns piece, I have a Paul Rogers piece, and all my pieces flow together. They're not hit and miss. I don't have no mess on me. Thank you so much. No problem. That really means a lot to me. Well, you got it before I croaked anyway, huh? <laughs> Wall of fame or shame. This is my old house. Hobos used to sleep over here, and uh, I would squirt them with the hose. <laughs> Had a lot of good times. Yeah, all the hot tub parties after the conventions and Naked everything. hot tubs. Yeah. And, uh, Hey, how you doing? Hi. Are you guys No, I actually own this house. I'm the one that painted it this color. No. Oh, my God. I And you still moved in? I'm Annette LaRue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there it is, 20-something years. This is kind of a big part of my life. Most of my tattoo career was here. It was my dream to have a shop in New Orleans, so it kind of came true. Ernie Gosnell is also known as Ernie the Hat. He had a shop in a neighborhood called Girt Town, and his wife had gotten robbed a couple times up in that neighborhood and got really freaked out. Wanted to go back home to Seattle. He told me what they wanted for the place, and. I said, not only yeah, but hell yeah. It's kind of a working class neighborhood, but really a rough neighborhood. As long as you were, you know, were hard enough to deal with the clients, you know, there wasn't no pretension or, you know, everyone was just real people, you know. They just came in, they didn't have a lot of money, but they wanted a, a, something nice. That clientele was about 99% uptown black people. I guess a lot of people didn't want to tattoo dark skin at that time. Well, I worked for Jackie. She taught me how to tattoo dark skin. So we got well known for that. We would had a half urban, half traditional uh, take on tattooing. We definitely did a lot, of, a lot of letters, a lot of names. We had people from Xavier University and then we had thugs that stood on the corner all day and would come in and pay us with ones and fives. 
I did tattoo Silk and I tattooed C Murder, Big Ed the Assassin, who also sang for True. Master P actually got tattooed at that shop by Scott Harrison. He did the three Kevin Miller portraits on Master P, Silk, and C Murder. And the Ice Cream Man, Master P, he did that tattoo on him too. So Scott's very proud of that. I wanna make sure that he gets a shout out for tattooing the number one rappers of the 90s. It was the golden era, I think. I had such a great crew. We'd hang out, we'd party together. So we were like a little family. And that ran a pretty tight ship. I mean, it was obvious that she cared about everybody and was just on your ass to make you do good. Well, I bought another shop that was downtown, yeah. right past the French Quarter on Frenchman Street. <laughs> Frenchman Street, it's like Bourbon Street. There's just people walking by all the time and getting tattooed. And so it was pretty busy there. Like, it was crazy all the time. It was fun. I'm Annette LaRue, and this is my shop, Electric Ladyland. Electric Ladyland was a busy street shop. A shop like that has an energy and a vibe to it, and you can just feel it when you go in there. All the time that Annette had it, it was the best tattoo shop in the city. The artwork that came out of there was superb. And I think she kept it that way. We started getting busier and busier. And next thing you know, it just took off. It was just crazy. They had the street shop, tourist, Florida Lee kind of souvenir type customers, but then there was also custom work going on and great tattooers came through there. To me, Electric Lady Nine was kind of the best of both worlds. The tattooers would make money, the customers would get great tattoos, and everybody would have a ball. It was like wild and partying, and you know, it was awesome. I loved it. Tattooers aren't necessarily always the most reliable people in the world. They're gonna go out and get drunk, or show up hungover, or something like that. It's New Orleans. I think she ended up becoming kind of like a mama san babysitter, and that would drive anybody crazy. She had a big old staff to manage all those people and guys, too. Ah, I think it was quite an adventure for Annette. Just kept getting harder and harder to run the shop. It kept getting busier and busier. And I got really tired of it. And I just was like, you know what, I'm done. It's a good amount of people out there. Yeah, I guess they took an Uber here or something. They're out there at like 10 o'clock. We don't even open till 11. Electromagnetic is a working class street shop, but it's definitely not the party vibe in there. It's not the open pit to fall into on Frenchman Street. That shop is crazy. I don't ever want to own another place like that. Here, if it's a two or three man shop, that's it. That's all I can take. Steve, my boyfriend and I are the main artists. He's great to work with. To me, he's the real deal tattooer. You walk in this shop, you can ask for anything, and Steve can do it. We got a cast and crew of regulars that come in and sit in with us and help us out. We also have a guy who helps us on the floor. His name's Chris Williams, and he's gonna be a great tattooer one day. This shop is like a working man shop. There's a lot of military, a lot of shipyard workers, this was a perfect venue, you know, for the tattoos I like to do. I do more of the smaller tattoos. I'm a little older now, and I'm very unpatient these days. The new breed of tattoo customers come in with their phone in their hand, and I want this. OK, so I like the wings with, like, the flowers. But okay. you said he'll probably tweak the flowers a little bit. Yeah. And then I just want that black and white. Yeah, perfect. But I like the head. And then I want something different in the middle. Like, okay. I was just open to suggestions. Cool. Not a problem. I think young kids are in the mindset that if it's not on the computer, maybe it doesn't count. But everything's online now. So people don't realize that's already been done as a tattoo. And it's on, it's on Pinterest. That's a cool design. Yeah, kind of a little combo, a few different ones. How's that, all right? You'll live, right? I enjoy doing walk-ins, so I'm gonna put all my effort into it and I'm not gonna shortchange them. 
we certainly try to show people that they can get something better. Do you love it? Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> Steve gonna steal my show. <laughs> Let's see how good he is. As of right now, the vast majority of our time spending in the tattoo shop, making electromagnetic our place and putting our tattoos out there and trying to build something. It's a mom and pop tattoo shop. It's just having the kind of shop that I always enjoyed working in. I think it works out pretty good. God, don't get too close. <laughs> Please. <laughs> if I see a wrinkle, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> She has strong suits and parts of the business that I don't, and I think we complement each other well. But I also think we didn't start dating till she was in her 40s, so I'm sure I got the, the slightly toned down version of Annette. <laughs> I don't know that it would have all worked out the same if we were in our 20s. She's way calmer now. Way, way more chill now. She's someplace where she feels like she's doing what she wants to do. She's just doing her thing, which I have a lot of respect for. She's just doing the same thing all over again. She got, you know, the big name tattooers coming through and doing guest spots. It just goes to show you that even early in your career, you meet these people, they can make an impact on your life and then come back into your life later on. So it kind of came full circle. It's great to see her still tattooing. It's like she's definitely made her mark and is still going. I really don't mind it around here. For me, I like the slower pace. Our neighbors are really quiet, and that's nice. We come home, and we're tired, and we want to be quiet, too. We do make a little noise with our motorcycles every now and then, but most of the neighbors are pretty cool and don't mind, so. And we kind of create our own little culture here in the way we like and with people we like. We ain't going to make a million bucks, but we're gonna make a living doing our thing. I mean, that's the American dream, right? It's our world, honey. Yeah. Look at it. Heck. All right, that's enough of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs>